Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Jay Moore. I'm the founder of the group, The Ordinary Christian, and I'm giving you the, the third uh, video training on, you know, sharing Jesus, becoming a disciple maker. And today we are going to look at how to initiate a spiritual conversation. That's right. How to initiate a spiritual conversation. You know, it's one thing to know how to talk about Jesus, how to share the gospel, how to share your testimony, which we talked about already. Uh, we, you know, and getting past all of the different roadblocks. But when it comes down to the, you know, the wheel hitting the road, how do you actually initiate that conversation? How do, you, how do you get started talking about Jesus? How to talk about spiritual things? You know, we know how to talk about football. We know how to talk about politics. You know, we know how to talk about all kinds of things. But it, for some reason, it seems like when we get to the point where we say, hey, I need to go out and share Jesus, this big old question mark comes into our mind is, but how do I get started? How do I initiate that conversation? How do I transition from a, you know, a regular conversation to a conversation that's talking about Jesus. And that's what we're going to talk about today, because once you can get that going, you know, and you practice the other things that we've talked about, there's not going to be an issue here about you sharing Jesus. Once you can get moving into a conversation that talks about God, that talks about the need for salvation, that talks about Jesus, the rest is, you know, flowing because of your practice that you've been doing. So how to initiate a conversation, a spiritual conversation? Well, we're going to look at a biblical principle. It is the biblical principle of asking questions. Asking questions. Ask them a question. You're talking with somebody and you're in a conversation. That's what all conversations are about. You're, you, you usually ask a question like, how are you doing? You know, what's been going on in your life? You know, we haven't talked for, it seems like for ages. What's been going on in your life? It's a question that solicits a response back uh, from people. I mean, that's when we go out and we have coffee with somebody or we're going out, we're hanging out with people. It's usually filled with a lot of questions being asked and then the responses that come for those questions. And then usually um, the other person who's been asked a question gave the response. Then they reciprocate with asking you a question and then you begin to share about your life. It's, it's questions. And this is a biblical principle for initiating a spiritual conversation. One day when Jesus and his disciples were traveling, uh, the Bible says that they needed to go a certain way to go through Samaria. And when they got to Jacob's well, Jesus is exhausted. He is, he's famished. He's tired. And, and he sends his disciples on into town to go buy some food. And he's going to sit there at the well of Jacob and just rest. And all of a sudden, here comes this woman from the town at a time of day when women don't normally come. And uh, it, we all know this. It's, it's the Samaritan woman, you know, the woman at the well, the story of that one. And she's coming up there. She sees this Jewish man. Now, understand, Jews and, and Samaritans don't really like each other. They don't associate with each other. And they certainly don't talk to each other unless it's for business purposes. But, you know, she sees him there. And it's a man and a woman in public. They don't really talk either. And so she's just going over to the well. She's going to get her water and she's going to go back to her home. But as she's there, what does Jesus do? He initiates a spiritual conversation. How? By asking her a question. He says, can you get me some water? Simple little question. To get the conversation started with somebody who would not naturally or normally have a conversation with. She, he asks her a question, could you get me water? And then she turns around and responds to him, what are you, a, you Jewish man, talking to me, a Samaritan woman? And, and then they got this conversation going. And as they're going out there, he, he's talking with her and he's revealing himself to her. And finally, she comes to the point where she perceives that he's a prophet because he said, you know, go get your husband. She says, I, I don't, I'm not married. He says, you're right. You've answered that question quite correctly. You know, the man that you're with is not your own, but you have been married five times before. Um, and so you've answered and she says, man, you must be a prophet. And so the conversation continues on and she says, well, I know that when the Messiah comes, he'll reveal all things to us. And Jesus ends up saying, I am he. And she's convinced. But how did it all get started? By asking a question. I have found in my 
time in ministry, in time of living out a, a missional life, trying to shine the light of Christ brightly in my part of this dark world, the best way for me to initiate a conversation is usually by asking a question. Let, and, and so I'm going to give you two examples of, of how you can do that. Um, the first one is, you know, let's say I want to initiate a spiritual conversation with people that I'm intentionally trying to go reach, maybe in my neighborhood. And so I'm going to go around and, uh, and I'm going to meet my neighbors. I'm going to actually go knock on their door. How do you initiate a spiritual qu uh, a conversation by asking questions to people you don't really know by knocking on their door? You know, how, how does that get going? How do you initiate that? Well, you, you do it by like this. And you knock on the door and say, knock, 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 knock. And you ask them a question by saying something like this. Um, the question is, hi, my name is Jay. I'm one of your neighbors. And, uh, you know, I'm going around. Me and my wife are going around the neighborhood. And uh, we know times are tough in people's lives and maybe so for our neighbors as well. And, and so we're praying for people and we're wondering, is there anything in your life that you need God to take care of? Any need going on in your life that I can pray for you about? So the question is, is there a need? Is there a need? Is there a need that I can pray about for you? Immediately, I'm asking the question, but immediately it moves it into the spiritual realm because I'm talking about needs. And a lot of needs really resonate on the spiritual level of people. But then it's also talking about prayer that I can pray for you about. Now, when you go and ask that kind of question, you're going to get a, a varying response. But if a person is going to engage you in the conversation, it is already set for it to be a spiritual conversation because you're talking about God, you're talking about prayer, and you're talking about him meeting their needs. It is a spiritual conversation from the get-go by simply asking that question, is there a need I can pray about for you to God? It's a great question. It happens all the time. Some of the varying responses you're going to get would be some people are going to say, yeah, no, thank you. I'm not really interested. You know, everything's fine. And, and we call those red lights. You know, like when you're driving down the street, you get a red light. What are you supposed to do? Stop. You're not going any further. It's a red light. It's, it's done. They're letting you know kindly. I'm sorry. I'm not interested. Uh, there's, they might say things, oh, I really appreciate that. But you know what? No, nothing's really going on. They're just politely trying to tell you, I'm not interested. Now, some people who are red lights are not so kind and so polite. They may actually say, oh, my gosh, and slam the door. As a matter of fact, there was a, a, a situation or a, a, a time when I was taking a couple ladies out from our church and showing them. I said, you know what? I, I don't really ever get any bad responses from this. You know, nobody's really rude. The very next door I knock on, I said, hi, my name is Jay, and this is Teresa, and this is uh, Cynthia. And we're out praying for people because we know people are uh, going through tough times. Want to know, is there anything going on in your life you can pray around? She goes, oh my gosh, you Jesus freaks. She slams the door shut. I looked and I said, well, there's the first one. <laughs> you know, you're going to get some of those red lights. Some of them are kind and polite, but they're definitely red and others are just not so kind and polite, but they, you know, for certain that they're red, but you might get some people who are sincerely interested in, in hearing more about God. They're just, uh, it's kind of a yellow light though. Uh, they say, yes, I have a prayer need. Could you pray about this? you know, situation. And, uh, and, and, and so you do, you know, but you immediately got a conversation going on. I remember a, a time because some of the prayer requests you're going to get are very interesting requests. Uh, I was, my wife and I were going out, we're knocking on a door and we met this one lady and told her what we're doing, that we're out praying for people, wondering if there's anything going on in her life that we can pray about. She's in an apartment complex and she says, yes, there really is. I said, what is it? She said, my upstairs neighbors, they are so loud. I mean, I can't get any sleep. They're just constantly bouncing around, jumping around. They got parties going on. They are just so loud. Could you pray that God would quiet them down? I said, absolutely. So what did we do? Right then and there, we prayed for God to, to help her out and you know relieve her of all of that issue of, of uh, noisy upstairs neighbors. And we gave her some cookies and said, hey, we'll come back in a couple weeks just to see how things are going. She said, great, love to see you. A couple weeks later, we came back by and said, hey, you know, this is Jay and Linda. We were here a couple weeks. We said, yeah, I remember. I said, yeah, we were praying about your upstairs neighbor. Wanted to see how things going. She said, you would be amazed. 
I said, what? God answered our prayers. I said, really? How did he do that? She says, the very next day after uh, you prayed, they moved. They packed up and they moved out. And all of a sudden, I said, well, that's amazing. We, we thank God for it. And I said, hey, can I tell you a true story from the Bible? She said, love to. Come on in. She came on in. And I got a chance to engage further on a spiritual conversation simply because I started off by asking, is there anything I can pray for you about? You know, so it's kind of a yellow light. And then sometimes you get these really green lights that said, man, I'm excited about it. I, I'm glad you're here. And, you know, I've been waiting for this. I needed this. Uh, as a matter of fact, there was this time when I'm, I'm training this church here in Tucson, Enchanted Hills Baptist Church, and this team went out and they are going out and praying this. And, and, and they asked the question, is there, is there anything that we can pray for you about? You know, and she says, are you serious? As, as they knocked on the door. Uh, they asked that question. She said, are you serious? And he said, well, yeah, we're, we're here to pray for people. And she says, you don't understand. I just got home from work. And I had this m note left by my husband telling me he's leaving me. And he had packed up and he'd left. And I was just praying. I said, God, if you're real, I need you now. I don't know if you're real, but if you're real, I need you now. And you come knocking on my door saying you're here to pray for me? You see, she was a green light. She was prepared. She was ready. She was in desperate need of God showing up in her life and showing off. And, and so they got a chance to pray for her. They got a chance to witness to her. And she gave her heart to Jesus. Why? Because they were willing to go out and ask a question. Ask questions. Is there anything I can pray for you about? You're at work. You're having lunch with your coworkers. And you just say, hey, Sue. Hey, Bill. Is there anything going on in your life I can pray for you about? You know I'm a Christian. You know I, I, I pray for people. I'd love to pray for you. Anything going on in your life? And see what happens. You, what you're doing here is it's kind of like fishing, okay? We're fishing. We're putting the, the lure, the bait on the hook to draw them in. And the question is the lure. Is there anything going on in your life? And if these people are God-prepared people who got things going on in their lives, they're looking for an answer. They're looking for God. And so you, you're, you're just putting out the bait to see who bites. You, don't, you can't control who bites. Who's the one who responds? Who's going to be a red light, green light, yellow light? You have no control of that. But you'll never know unless you go out and you what? Ask the question. Two examples. Is there a need? You ask a question. The question. Here's another question you can ask. It's the next one here. Uh, ask uh, the question of how are you today? How are you today? Let's say you're going up into a uh, uh, a cashier, You're, you just bought some coffee or you just bought, um, you know, a um, grocery and, and you're going up to the cashier and, uh, and as you're paying for the, some stuff, you, you ask them and says, so how are you today? They're probably going to answer, oh, I'm doing pretty good. Now, we're not asking for prayer, but we're, we're asking because when you ask somebody how they're doing, the law of reciprocity kicks in. The law of reciprocity says that when you ask somebody a question like that, they're going to reciprocate by what? Asking you the same question. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing good. How you been? And now you can move it into a spiritual question or a spiritual conversation because now they just ask you how you're doing. Here's how I respond. This is what I would suggest you do. When somebody at a cashier or somebody asks you, hey, Jay, how you doing? Or how you doing today? You answer them by saying this. You know what? I'm doing better than I deserve. That's right. I'm doing better than I deserve. You know, as sinners, what do we deserve? We deserve to go to hell. But it's because of the grace of God through the Lord Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection that we have been forgiven of our sins. So we are much better off than we deserve, right? Absolutely. Now, when they hear that, sometimes it just flies over their head. They're not responding to it. And you know, okay, this isn't one who, this isn't a fish who's biting. Other times they might be saying something like, oh no, I think you deserve the best in all of the world. And then I love that part because then it says, oh, you don't understand. If I got what I deserve, it would be a really hot day in hell. But the good news is I'm not there and I'm not going to go there. Would you like to know why? Can I tell you why? And it's because of the Lord Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. And through faith, I've received him into my life. 
You see, I started off by asking them a question, how are you? They reciprocated after they answered it by asking me the same question. And then I got to share, I'm better than I deserve. And all of a sudden, we're in a spiritual conversation. All right, see, these are the things. Ask questions. Learn to ask good questions. L learn to ask questions that lead people into the spiritual realm of life. And this is a, these are two good ones. Is there any need that I can pray for you about? How are you today? And be ready to respond back when they ask you, how are you? With, I'm better than I deserve. All right, this is Jay Moore. I hope this helps you. It's just a little, little something to kind of get you started in developing a spiritual conversation. As you do this and as you practice it, it's going to get easier. You're going to develop new ways that's really good for you. You know, you, you learn from somebody, but then you develop your own way of doing it. All right, this is Jay Moore with The Ordinary Christian. I hope that you enjoyed this. We're gonna send you another video training. It'll be the last one in this series. And I wanna encourage you to really look for it, watch it, because I've got an offer on that training that will blow your minds, that will help you become a, a person who lives a powerful missional life. It will uh, help you shine the light of Christ brightly in your part of the, this dark world better and, uh, and, it, and it's a, man, it's a deal you can't refuse. So anyhow, take care. God bless you. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.